Amen. Praise God for that uh, beautiful theme song. God is good, friends. Wow, it has been quite uh, a long time since I have visited uh, Indonesia Youth for Christ. It's been like, what, five years? Four years? And uh, it's unfortunate right now that it's, uh, that it's social distancing and somehow we are oceans apart. But still praise God that no matter what the situation is, nothing can stop the work of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen? And by the way, I'll not be able to hear you, but this is one thing that we'll do. If you want to say amen, just lift up your thumbs in, in agreement to what the Lord has done in our lives. And friends, you know what? Speaking via Zoom is quite challenging. And it's just so weird to look at your face. And I don't want to look at only my face. I want to see my friends' beautiful faces. So if you could switch on your videos, that would somehow mean a lot to the speaker. You know, I'm the kind of guy who wants, who wants to somehow shake your hand or even hug you. I'm a very physical guy. So, so for me right now to just talking to myself and three other people, it's such a challenge. Now, oh, it's awesome. Now I could see the beautiful faces of my friends who, whom I have not seen for quite a long time. Oh, so hi to everyone. It's such a joy to see those beautiful faces and the new faces as well. Oh, I wish that we would have this, uh, this IYC in a physical format, but we still have to praise God because of His goodness that we're still able to do this. And you know what? It's still fresh in my mind when we had the first Indonesia Youth for Christ. Yes, friends, I was there. What the Lord has done in that first conference really blew my mind. And I know for a fact that the impact of that first conference still lives on until today. And I believe that a lot of young people's lives were changed. My life was changed during that time as well. So let us pray that the Lord will somehow pour His Spirit upon us. Because I know for a fact that without God, this conference would be nothing. Without God, even we have, we have speakers already set up, this would not amount to anything without the Holy Spirit. Remember, friends, not by might nor by power, but only by what? Only by His Spirit. So as, uh, as we start this morning, let us bow our heads once again as we pray. Let us pray, friends. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise you and we thank you because you are the reason for Indonesia Youth for Christ. It will not be Indonesia Youth for Christ without Christ. So dear Father, we just pray that may Christ be lifted up, magnified and exalted each and every session, O Lord. May it all be about you, not about us, not about the officers, not about the organizers, not even about the speakers, but may it be about Jesus Christ, magnified, glorified, exalted, and Lord, I pray in a very special way that as we share what you have done in my life, Lord, I pray that you please hide me behind the shadow of your cross, that I may not be seen nor be heard, but Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted. Lord, I pray as well for my brothers and sisters who are joining us here via Zoom and those who will watch this in Facebook. Lord, I pray that you please anoint all of us with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray as well for my brother Norman as he translates this message. Lord, I pray that you may speak to him and through him. Lord, I pray that you please unite us, give us one heart, one mind, and especially may we be led by one spirit. And Lord, I praise and I thank you because we know that you have a message that you have prepared for us today. So Lord, I pray that you please move me out of the way. Let Jesus alone be seen. Let Jesus alone be heard. That Jesus alone be magnified, lifted up, and exalted. Thank you so much, Lord, for hearing and answering our prayers. For we pray all this in the loving name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. So, friends, again, thank you so much for joining us. It is such a joy. I, I don't know why I'm excited, <laughs> even though we are not seeing physically each other. But I'm excited to somehow have this fellowship with my brothers and sisters there in Indonesia. Indonesia had been like my second home. And uh, I remember in the first few years of my, of my missionary work, Indonesia has been like one of my go-to places. 
And yes, friends, I'm always frequently found in Indonesia. I, I even love Indonesian food, except for the spicy ones, friends. Except for the spicy ones. My Filipino taste buds could not handle the, the Indonesian spice. <laughs> I'll, my ears will somehow have smoke if I eat that. So I praise God that I have my sisters, I have my friends to somehow test those food for me. So and I, I praise God that, that the Lord has been bringing me to, to one place after another. And friends, did you know what? It has been like almost 10 years since I went and joined the cause of God, this missionary work, fully relying on the Lord for everything. And I believe some of you already knows my story. But for those of you who do not know, I have been living by faith for the past nine years and 10 months. Yes, friends, in two months, I'll be turning 10. <laughs> not the full age, but just the missionary age. Yes, I'll be, turning, I'll be turning 10 years old in this missionary work. And you know what, friends? Life, life had been awesome. Life had been amazing. Yes, there are trials. There are trials. But friends, with or without the Lord's work, there's still trials. But what's amazing when you are giving your life to the Lord, even though there's a lot of trials, Friends, remember, your God is bigger than any trial. Can you say amen? I want to see your fingers. Lift up your fingers. Yes. Okay. And yes, this is an Asian conference. So Asians are very, very responsive. Asians are very, very what talkative. And it's a good thing right now that we are in Zoom. I could not hear you talking. But praise God, friends, that we have this fellowship together. It's wonderful fellowship. And this is one thing. I'd like to share with you, for those past nine years and 10 months, the Lord has taught me a lot of things. When I joined this, mis this ministry, this missionary work, yes, friends, I'm a prayer missionary. The Lord has somehow placed that in my heart to somehow get involved in prayer. And I tell you this, prayer is not my go-to before. All the while I thought, while I was growing up, prayer is a waste of time. Isn't that crazy? I'm, I'm a missionary leading out prayer sessions, but I thought before that prayer is a waste of time. I'm the kind of guy who loves to work. I'm like an energizer bunny. I just work, work, work. Yes, I'm, I'm small and, and I, I move a lot. I move fast. And I'm thinking, if I spend time in a corner praying, it's going to be a waste of my time. But my dear friends, how the Lord changed my mind. How the Lord changed my heart. Because in this past nine years and 10 months, I have seen so many things that the Lord has done through prayer compared to the time that I have not been leaning on Him. Oh, and friends, by the way, please pray for, for me that I'll not talk so fast that my translator, Norman, will be able to catch up. Okay. Norman, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give you a speed up translation. So friends, let me continue on with this with this talk this, this morning. I realized, friends, that most of my prayers before were really selfish. Aren't all of our prayers are selfish? We want this. We want that. Lord, please. I remember my prayers before. One of my prayers is that, that the Lord will make me tall. Yes, friends, I may look tall in Zoom, but I'm not that tall in person. <laughs> and I, all those prayers are just like all for me but not really for the cause of God. And this is one thing I learned, friends. This is one thing that I've learned. When I got into the prayer ministry, that how I viewed prayer was also wrong. And, and all the while I thought, friends, that I'm doing a good job when praying because I'm not demanding when it comes to prayer. I say, please, Lord, please. <laughs> but even though there's please, it's still my personal desires. It's still my selfish desire that I bring to Him. And this is one thing that what's so amazing, God is so patient with us. God is so patient with us that He walks at our own pace. And this is one amazing thing with God. He does not ask us to run if we have not walked with Him. He does not ask us to jump if we have not run with Him. He does not ask us to fly if we have not run or jumped with Him. This is the amazing God that we serve. Can you say amen to that, friends? I want to see those fingers again. Yes, I'm just making sure that you are not asleep. 
because some of you have just taken your breakfast right now. So let's get that blood flowing. So friends, this is one thing I realized. The Lord wants us to be in submission to him. Because friends, look at this. Most of the time, our prayers are in the form of a command. Yes, friends, we try to command God. And let's look at this. Let's look at this. In the very first place, what is your gesture when you pray? You don't pray like this. Lord, you better give me what I want. You do not pray like this. Friends, what is your gesture when you pray? You bend your knees. You bow your head. What does that signify? It signifies submission. It signifies that there is a higher power. It signifies that you are not in charge. That you are submitting to the one who's more powerful than you. And this is one thing I realize, friends, that the Lord really wants to guide our path, even to guide our prayers. Since our prayers are mostly selfish, since our prayers are, are mostly short-sighted, the Lord desires to lead our prayers. And I'd like to read this, this first quote that I'll be sharing with you. And by the way, friends, if you want to have a copy of this quotes, just talk to Maria, ask them about this because I'll, I'll somehow send this to them. I actually send it already to, to Norman. So if you know Norman, yeah, bug Norman and he will give you this quote. So friends, listen to this. From the book, Testimony Treasures, Volume 1, page 214, paragraph 3, it says, When we come to Him, when we come to God, we should pray that we may enter into accomplish, into and accomplish His purpose and that our desires and interests be lost in His. Isn't this crazy, friends, that our desire and our interest be lost in His? And I'm thinking, how about my desires, Lord? <laughs> How about my prayers? How about my wishes? Friends, listen. It's not over yet. Listen, listen to this. We should acknowledge our acceptance of His will, not praying Him to concede to ours. Did you get this? Our prayer should not be asking God to bend and somehow give in to what we want. Listen, friends, this is one amazing quote here. This is one amazing line that really spoke to my heart. It is better for us that God does not always answer our prayers just when we desire and in just the manner we wish. Isn't this crazy? It would be better for us that God does not answer our prayers in the way most of the time that we want it. And listen, friends, He will do more and better for us than to accomplish all our wishes. You know why? Because he says here, for our wisdom is holy. Friends, let me ask you this question. Do you really know what you want? Sometimes we think we do. But who among you here knows what's going to happen a week from now? No one. Even if you're a fortune teller, <laughs> you don't know. No one even knows here what's going to happen tomorrow. Would you agree? Anyone who knows what's going to happen tomorrow, raise your hand. Anyone raising their hands, a liar. Okay. <laughs> friends, no one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And friends, listen to this. No one even knows what's going to happen 30 seconds from now. You didn't even know that I'm going to do this. Only God knows that I'm going to do this. This is my point, friends. This is my point here. Only God knows what's the end from the beginning. Only God knows what's best for us. And why should we not somehow submit to him? Why should we not yield to his leading and to know his will for us? And this is one thing, friends, that I realize. This is one thing that I realize. Remember, Christ desires that we submit our will to him, our desires to him. And this is one thing, friends, that I learned in these nine years and ten months, that his desire, his will is way, way, way better than all my desires combined. Can you say amen to that again? Amen? Some of you are resisting. Okay, friends. Amen. God's will is the best for us. Why? Because he knows what could make you happy. He knows what could make you joyful. And sometimes we think that we do, but we don't. Without his leading and, our guide and his guidance, friends, 
we're going to be lost. And this is one thing I realized as well, even in the ministry. I have been involved in the ministry since, since I was young. I was involved in the youth leadership since I was 13 or 14 years old. But friends, and I realized that even my prayers for the ministry are quite selfish. And all the while I thought, where the ministry is going and all the things that I was asking God, I was just asking him to bless my plans. I was just asking him to show up when I need him, but I was not really asking for his leading. I was not really asking for his guidance. Friends, isn't that true? Isn't that true to all of us? That most of the time we just want to get the benefit that we get from God, but we really don't want him. We really don't want his leading and his guidance. Why? Because we do not trust him. We do not trust him that he will lead us into the place where he will make us happy. But friends, I tell you, for the past nine years and 10 months, I never regretted that decision of letting the Lord lead my life. Can you say amen to that? Friends, if you want to say amen, a really loud amen, let it go past your screen. Amen? Amen. So friends, listen to this thought. Who is our greatest example? Greatest example is Jesus Christ. A greatest example that we need to follow is him and him alone. Listen to this, friends. Help in Daily Living, page 18, paragraph 3, it says, Christ in his life on earth made no plans for himself. Did you hear that? Christ in his life on earth, what? Made no plans for himself. Who among you here is planning for your life? Raise your hands. Be honest. Join me. Join me. Oh, it's a lot of liars here, huh? <laughs> we plan for our lives, don't we? I remember before, I was planning. I was, I'm a really good planner, friends. Just imagine, I'm thinking at the age of 20, I should graduate. At the, end of, I, at the age of 25, I should be, I should be a, a, having my own business. At the age of 30, I'll be earning my first million. 35, I'll be married. Friends, I'm 45 right now and I'm still single. Praise the Lord. Yes, I'm still single, but not advertising. And I, and I somehow was blown away because all the while I thought that my plans, fulfillment of my plans will make me happy. But friends, when I surrendered my plans to the Lord and let him plan for my life, friends, every fulfillment of his plan in my life has been blowing my mind away. This is one thing that I realized. If you want the plans to be successful, Forget about your plans. Let God plan for you. Amen to that. So listen to this, friends, how Jesus, how Jesus dealt with his life. In Christ in his life on earth made no plans for himself. He accepted God's plan for him. And day by day, the Father unfolded his plans. So should we depend upon God that our lives may be the simple outworking of his will. As we commit our ways to him, he will direct our steps. Friends, isn't that crazy? As we commit our ways to him, he will what? He will direct our steps. Friends, God would be our GPS. Friends, I know some of you are using Google Maps or Waze, and sometimes you even got lost following Google Maps or Waze or Siri. And this is one thing that I'll assure you. God will never get you lost. Can you say amen to that? Amen? Okay, yes. Let's have this exercise this morning. Friends, listen to this. Too many in planning for a brilliant future make an utter failure. Let God plan for you. And friends, look at the situation that we are in right now. How many plans have been canceled? How many plans have been put on hold? How many weddings have been postponed? How many graduations has been canceled? I was supposed to speak in a graduation here in my, in my region, in a 70 Adventist college, I was so excited that will be my first graduation message and somehow it did not happen because of this pandemic. All the plans just did not fall in its proper place. We were surprised. We were shocked. We were shaken. Yes, friends, listen to this. Too many in planning for a brilliant future make an utter failure. You know what God is telling us? He's saying here, let God plan for you. 
friends, just imagine God's plan will still continue on even if your plans are not happening. Friends, God's plan, no virus would ever stop his plans. Can you say amen to that, friends? That's why the plans that you have in your life, it should be God's plan for you. This is, I guess, the reason why that when we pray, we should not tell God, Lord, I want this. We should be praying, Lord, what do you want for me? What do you desire for me to follow? Who is the person that you want me to end up with? Because most of the time we come to the Lord, Lord, please give this person to me and I'll be very, very faithful as a church goer. If you give this person as my wife, I will, I will do our preaching for the whole year. Friends, listen to me. Listen to yourselves. It's crazy, isn't it? Sometimes we're asking for things that we do not even know what's going to be the result for us. Sometimes we're thinking that that's going to be an amazing life if we have this person. We, have we even come to the Lord and asked the Lord, Lord, do you want me to get married or do you want me to stay single? Friends, you know what? If it's God's will for you to get married, then that's going to be the happiest life that you will live. If it's the right person that the Lord has led you into. But if the Lord chose you to be single, my dear friends, it's going to be an amazing life. I tell you, I'm even afraid to get married right now because I know that the Lord has made clear to me that I'll be single. And I tell you, friends, I'm much more happier compared to the time that I had a relationship. Yes, friends, believe it or not, I had a relationship before. Somebody crazy enough to somehow end up with me. But this is one amazing thing, my dear friends. This is one amazing thing. All the while, I thought that I'd be fulfilled. I'd be happy on my own choosing. That friends, these people that I have ended, ended up with, they are amazing, amazing godly women. But this is one thing I realized. If it's not God's will for me, I would not receive the happiness that I really desire. And right now, friends, God is so good. And I'll shout at the top of my house that God is good. And guess what, friends? A lot of my of my married friends, of my, of my friends that have partners right now, even call me for comfort, for counsel. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you should be the one comforting me because I'm the one who's single here. This is one thing I realize, friends. If God is the one leading your life, it's, it's a path of happiness. It's a path of joy. Can you say amen? All single people, you should, you should raise your thumbs past your screen here right now. This is one thing that I'd like to assure you, dear young people. In our prayer, it should not just be, God, please, Lord, please, I want this. But we should come to the Lord and ask Him, Lord, what would you have me? What would you have me pray for? What do you want for me? Isn't it amazing? Since you know, friends, that your God is a powerful God, that your God has your back, that your God has somehow in his mind the best thing for you. Why should you be afraid to ask a prayer like that? Friends, listen to this. Another comforting thought from Testimony Treasures again. It says here, Our faith can be just as firm and more reliable by committing the desire to the all-wise God and without feverish anxiety, in perfect confidence, trusting all to him. Did you hear this, friends? The Lord did not want you to be anxious. Who among you here are anxious? Okay, don't raise your hand. <laughs> I know some of us are anxious right now. But friends, we don't have to be. If we give God every bit of the fiber of our being and our plans, listen, friends, we have the promise. We know that He hears us if we ask according to His what? To His will. We know that He hears us if we ask according to his will. So this is one thing, friends. This is the condition here. We have to be sure that what we're praying for is in accordance to his will. Friends, this is one thing that I'll assure you. If it's accordance to his will, it brings everything in it. Yes, friends. If it's God's perfect will, it's really perfect. It's not called perfect will if it's imperfect. Can you say amen to that? That's why it's called his perfect will. Do not settle for less than perfect, my dear friends. God desires perfection for you. He wants to give you a perfect peace, 
Let's go to the perfect peace later. I'm sorry, I could not stop smiling. My cheekbone hurts right now. But this is what happens when you let God make decisions for you. You'll have that problem. Your cheekbones will, will continually hurt. But by God's grace, He will sustain it. Listen to this, friends. Our petitions must not take the form of a command, but intercession for Him to do the, to do the things that, he des- that we desire of Him. Did you hear this? Our, our petitions must not take the form of a command, but of intercession for God to do the things that we desire of Him to do. Friends, just imagine this. If we let God make the choosing for us, just imagine what life would be. And this is one thing that I realize as well, friends, because before I have a lot of lists, I have a lot of things in my prayer list. Lord, I want this. I want to be tall. I want my pimples to be gone. I want a, a lighter complexion. All selfish things. I want this girl. I want to have a car. All those things that, that we desire. But this is one amazing thing, friends. The more I surrender that to the Lord, the more the Lord showed me His will for my life. When people ask me right now, so Jem, what is, what is your prayer request? Can we pray for you? And there was one time that I did not realize that prayer request i don't even have a prayer request now you know what because i realize friends that what god desires for me is always best for me what god has given me and it blows my mind it even blows my mind thinking that what i wished before is what's gonna make me happy but what gave me somehow is even more than what i wish for so you know one thing <clears throat> that i'm praying for right now is that lord just prepare my heart for what you're about to give me. My prayer is, Lord, please help my will to always be submitted to your will. Because I know, friends, that if I ask something that is not in accordance to God's will, I will just stop God from giving me what's best. Did you hear that? If I push what I want in my life, I'll be depriving myself from receiving what's really best for me. Trust God, my dear friends. He knows what's best for you. He sees the end from the beginning. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He knew the things that will somehow inspire you. He knows the things that annoys you. This is the God that we serve, my dear friends. So he's asking you right now, trust him. And friends, listen to this, to this counsel from Science of the Times and from Faith and Works. Men, cannot depart from the counsel of God and retain their peace and restfulness of soul. There is no insanity so dreadful, so hopeless as that following human wisdom and guided by the wisdom of God. Whoa, wow. Did you hear this? (laughs) You cannot retain your peace and restfulness of soul if you depart from the wisdom of God. And this is one thing, friends, this is one thing that's, that's, quite, that's quite alarming because most of the time we depend so much on men rather than we depend on God. And I remember sharing my testimonies in other places and people will come to me. So, Brother Jem, should I leave my job? Should I leave school right now and follow the path that you have taken and to be a missionary? And then you know what? I'll tell them, do not ask your direction from me. Ask it from the Lord. Don't get a second-hand instruction from me. I don't even know what's going to happen in your future. So do not ask me. Ask the one who led me in this path. Because, my dear friends, and, and people are saying, so Jim, how, I'm gonna do, I'm, how am I going to know if it's the Lord's leading? I said, you will know if you give him everything. It's like developing a relationship with your best friend, friends. The reason why we do not trust God because He is not our friend yet, more so our best friend. Spend time in the Word. Spend time on your knees. Surrender your desire to Him and get to know Him as you should. Can you say amen to that, friends? Ah, Stop texting your friends as often as you should. Start texting the Lord. Huh? Give your time much with the Lord than your boyfriend, friends, than your girlfriend. Friends, I assure you, you'll have a more progressive life 
if you spend more time with a God who desires to have an intimate relationship with you. Listen, friends. Faith and Works, page 45, paragraph 3. Listen. When God lets man have his own way, it is the darkest hour of his life. Wow. When God lets men or women have their own way, it's going to be the darkest hour of his life. You know why, friends? Because we're living in this very dark world. As I have just shared a while ago, we don't even know what's going to happen five minutes from now. We don't know what's going to happen even 30 seconds from now. We are living in a very dark situation. And the coronavirus just like had an exclamatory point in my point right now. All our, all our dreams right now seems to be shattered. But this is one amazing thing. You don't have to walk in darkness when you have the light of God. Amen? This is the reason why that the Lord doesn't want you to have your own way. Because He knows if He lets you, you will get lost. It will be the darkest hour of our lives, friends, if we do not let God have His way in us. And friends, listen to this beautiful thought here in Christ's object lesson. It says here, as the will of man cooperates with the will of God, it becomes omnipotent. Friends, do you know? Do you know what omnipotent means? Friends, I am not an English speaker. I did not grow up speaking English. So I have to go back to the dictionary and look at the word omnipotent. You know what omnipotent means? All powerful, almighty, possessing all power. This is the reason why that the Lord wants our will to be submitted to his will. Because if this comes together, it will become almighty, all powerful. Why? None of us, friends. It's none of our doing. It's all because of him. Because you are linked to the one who is all-powerful. You are connected to the one who is almighty. So how can you be not <laughs> all-powerful? Did you see this, friends? This is, this is the place where God desires us to be. And most of the time, we, we overlook this. Why? Because we want our will to be done, not His will. And you see what are the things that you're missing out on? If you do not submit your will to God, Oh, friends, aren't we crazy, are we? Huh? We want crumbs when the Lord has prepared a feast for us. Huh? We want only a nasi pote when there's nasi goreng. Friends, uh, I'm not promoting really nasi goreng, but I just miss nasi goreng right now. Oh, Indonesia nasi goreng. Okay, I'm so distracted. Let's go back. Let's go back, friends. Listen to this thought. Whatever is to be done at His command, may be accomplished in his strength. In whose strength? In his strength. Not your strength, but the strength of your God. All his biddings are enabling. Isn't this crazy, friends? I don't know about you, but it just makes me smile so wide. It makes me smile that my eyes just disappear. Friends, this is the God that we serve. We have an awesome God. We have an awesome God. Can you say amen again, friends? Amen. Okay, let me move on to the next beautiful quote that God gave us this morning. From the book Prayer, page 226, paragraph 5, it says, If you have given yourself to God to do His work, you have no need to be anxious for tomorrow. Ha <laughs> ha! Did you hear this? If you have given yourself to God, to do his work, you have no need to be anxious for tomorrow. Wow, friends. Who among you here is quite anxious for tomorrow? Friends, we should not be, isn't it? We should not be anxious for tomorrow. If you have given yourself to God, just imagine your God is the God of not just today. Your God is the God of tomorrow. Your God is the God of tomorrow and the next tomorrow and the next tomorrow. You're the God. You have the God of forever, my dear friends. How can you be anxious? Friends, listen to this. Your God knows the end from the beginning. <laughs> How can you be anxious when you have a God who knows the end from the beginning? The events of tomorrow, which are hidden from your view, are open to the eyes of him who is omnipotent. 
isn't this amazing, friends? The events of tomorrow that are hidden from us are not hidden from Him. And friends, this is one thing that I'd like to share with you. Nothing surprises our God. Did you hear that? Nothing surprises our God. We get surprised. <laughs> Sometimes when there's a sound like, oh, <laughs> surprises us. Friends, you could not shock God. Even no matter how you try to shock God, He'll never be shocked. Like, ah, He'll never be shocked, my dear friends. We get shocked all the time. God never is surprised by anything. He sees the end from the beginning. And I believe, friends, a lot of us were surprised when this pandemic happened. A lot of us were surprised when most of our plans were put on hold. But God was never surprised with this. And, and you know what? One thing that, that really surprised me, unemployment rate. Unemployment rate really shocked me. Like we have, we have a hotel here in, I, no, no, it's not my hotel. It's, it's the hotel here. <laughs> I'm not that, I'm not rich, friends. Let me, let me correct that. Somebody's hotel here in my hometown, one of the oldest hotels here in my hometown, just closed down. One of the biggest hotels here just closed down. Cebu Pacific, one, one of our uh, major airlines in the Philippines, just laid off nearly 10,000 employees. Nearly 10,000 employees, they laid off. SM City, SM. If you have been to the Philippines, you know what SM is. This is one of the biggest malls in Asia, friends. This is a chain of department stores, malls in, in the whole Philippines. They laid off all their probationary workers. Just imagine this. It's like unemployment after unemployment. Just imagine how many lives were shocked. How many lives ended up not having any livelihood. And friends, I checked on April 20. April 2020, 7.3 million jobless in the Philippines. 7.3 million jobless in the Philippines. I don't know what's the unemployment rate in Indonesia. In U.S., it's even more heartbreaking. April 16, 2020, 22 million. 22 million. I'm just reading this. My heart is being crushed right now. May 7, three weeks later. 33 million unemployed. And three weeks later, on May 28, 40 plus million unemployed. After this, I stopped researching. It just breaks my heart. It gets me so depressed. And this is one thing I, I realized, friends. Man, U.S., the land of opportunity, is now closing up for opportunities. A lot of us Asians have been dreaming to go to U.S. Would you agree? Some are not. Some are. Because what we're thinking about is U.S., that's the land of opportunity. That's the land of money. I could earn much there and support my family here. That's how Asians operate, friends. We work outside so that we could help our family here. And this is one thing I realized. Even the land of opportunity right now are closing down an opportunity. We were surprised, but God was never surprised with this. Can you say amen? God was never surprised with this. Listen to this, friends. When we take into our hands the management of things which we have to do and depend upon our own wisdom for success, we are taking a burden which God has not given us. We are trying to bear it without His aid. Did you get this, friends? The Lord did not want us to bear this problem without his aid that's that's from prayer book prayer 227 paragraph one let me continue and it says here we are taking upon ourselves the responsibility that belongs to god whoa we are taking the responsibility that belongs to god so friends stop playing god you are not god you have a god who sees the end from the beginning that's why he, say, he says in Psalms 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am God. You know, what's my interpretation for that? Jem, be still. Jem, shut up. You are not God. I am God. So you better listen up. 
And same message to each one of us, friends. Shut up. You are not God. You are not the one in charge. The economy is not the one in charge. God is. Amen? Be still in His presence. Let us move on. It says here, We may all have anxiety and anticipate danger and loss, for it is certain to befall us if we take this role that's not supposed to be ours. But when we really believe that God loves us and means to do us good, we shall cease to worry about the future. We shall trust God as a child trusts a loving parent. Friends, just imagine. Who among you here, when you were a kid, when you were five years old, worry all day, oh, how are we going to pay the rent in the house? Huh? How is, how is my mom going to supply me with, with food? You do not worry about that. At five years old, at eight years old, do you worry about, I'm going to survive college? What book am I going to going to be buying for college friends you do not worry about that the future is in the hands of god friends if you have given your life to him can you say amen there's always an if if you have let god let him run your life friends let us move on there's a few more okay then our troubles and torments will disappear for our will is swallowed up in the will of god this is amazing. This is what happens when you surrender your will to Him. This is what happens when you surrender your will to Him. And friends, let me... Oh, I have a little, little time left. So I'll skip this very nice story here. So no, no, no. Okay. And this is how the Lord somehow provided for me, friends. This is one crazy thing because I was locked down here in my hometown in Iloilo for like four months now. And I will not have problem like providing for myself because my 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 family my sister cooks good and they will not leave me hungry and if you have seen my brothers and my sisters and I know they're not they're not watching uh, Indonesia Youth for Christ right now but you will not tell you could not tell that I'm their sibling they're big yes friends I have a brother that looks like a sumo wrestler yes friends and and people looks at me Jen what happened to you and this is one thing, friends. I, I'm not worried about myself in staying here in Iloilo because my sisters, my brothers will provide for me. One thing that I was somehow worried about was my fellow young missionaries. There are some ministry and missionary that the Lord has placed in my heart to help. And friends, take, take note. I have not been receiving salary for those past nine years and 10 months, but the Lord somehow has blessings that he has given me that I'm, I'm handing this out to some people that the Lord will prompt in my heart to give. And this is one amazing thing because now that I'm locked down here, that I could not go around country after country, I'm thinking, how am I going to supply the needs of my fellow missionaries? But God is not limited by our limitations. People will just call me, hey, Jem, the Lord has convicted me to send you something. So can you give me your PayPal address? Jem, give me your bank account. I'm thinking, wow, Lord, this is such an awesome work. I don't, have, I don't have to go around to worry about these things. My needs are provided and my fellow missionaries' friends are provided for. Get this. I, I even help more missionaries now than I was able to help in the time that I was traveling. Isn't this amazing, friends? Is our God limited? No. Our God is only limited by our unbelief. We only limit God when we do not trust Him. We limit God to perform His great and mighty things in our lives if we, take, if we do not take Him as God. And friends, let me look back again. Let me look back again to, to the unemployment rate. And I was just like sitting at my room thinking, Lord, why is the rate of unemployment so high? And of course, for obvious reasons, friends, their livelihoods, their livelihood were affected. The first, the first I guess, uh, industry that was affected was tourism. Yes, friends. Tourism was affected. All tourist spots are closed down. And services are affected. Airline companies are affected, friends. Manufacturing. 
is affected because their livelihood is somehow dependent on manufacturing, transportation, affected, entertainment. Have you heard a concert since the COVID-19? There's no concert. I've seen a virtual concert, but there's no physical concert. No movie theater was open, maybe in some countries, but majority has closed down. Food, agriculture, construction. Those people whose livelihood are dependent on these things have been affected. But friends, as people of God, we live not by construction, not by tourism, not by education, but we live by every word that the Lord speaks. Can you say amen to that? Amen. We live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Friends, let me read to you some of his promises. Isaiah 33 verse 16. It says, He shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munition of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. My dear friends, this is the promise of the Lord for his people. <laughs> Bread shall be given him. Or nasi goreng shall be given him. His waters should be sure. Maybe that's lemon water or, or chendol, but it will be sure, my dear friends. This is one amazing thing about our God. And this is one thing that the Lord wants us to remember. Remember in, in Matthew 6, verse 25, the Lord says, Therefore, take no thought. Remember that line? Take no thought. When you go to other versions, it says there, Therefore, do not worry. Therefore, do not be anxious. And this is one amazing discovery that I have, friends, because when I type that group of words, take no thought, you know how many times it appeared in the Bible? In seven verses, friends. How many verses? Seven. What does seven mean in the Bible? Okay, I could see you mouthing it. Perfection. Can you say amen? So the Lord wants us to have perfect peace. Did you get this? Seven times, seven times was it written in the Bible. And this is one amazing thing. Because if you have a red letter Bible, if you check out all those seven verses, it's all written in red. Ah, oh, isn't that awesome? It's all written in red. Wow. Those are the words of Jesus. Jesus himself is telling you, Ellen, do not worry. Maria, take no thought. Norman, be cool. Isn't that amazing? This is the God who's telling us, take no thought. And he gives the example here in Matthew, in Matthew 6, 25 to 33. And he, he's talking about the birds here. The birds... The fowls of the air, who is not even storing food, and yet the Heavenly Father is taking care of them. Look at the flowers, the wild flowers in the field, where they're alive today and tomorrow they'll be burned, and yet they are clothed with the most beautiful color. So, and God is reminding us, are ye much more valuable than they are? My dear friends, you have no reason to worry when you no, you are God. Amen? Friends, then what should we do, friends? Then what should we do? So, you might go back to your mom and say, Mom, I don't have to work now. I don't have to wash my plate because Brother Jem said, do not worry. So I should just be like a parasite here. No, that's not my message, friends. Look down. Go down to verse 33. You will hear the counsel there. Then seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Isn't it amazing? What was the counsel? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. But most of the time, we are really, really bad at following instruction. We seek the added things first. Did you get me? Friends, we seek the added things first. Follow the instruction. God says, Seek me first, and I will give you these added things. Just follow him. Trust him, and you will never regret. Why do we need to trust him? Listen, friends. Psalms 33, verse 6 and verse 9, it says there, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, 
and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. And verse 9, it says, For he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and he stood fast. My dear friends, you have nothing to worry when you believe in that powerful word of God. Because the word of the Lord is the reason why we are all here right now. He just spoke and all things came to existence. And this is one thing, friends. This is one thing that I realize. We, will not, we should not be shaken by the things that shakes the world right now. If we will not forget three things, we should never forget three things. Do not forget what you live for. You do not live for yourself. You live for the glory of God. Can you say amen? <laughs> and if you do not forget what you live by, you do not live by tourism. You do not live by education. You do not live by services or food industry or, or manufacturing or construction. You live by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And lastly, if you do not forget who you live for, you only live for Him, my dear friends. So friends, this is one thing that I'd like to tell you right now. In order to trust Him, you have to know Him. Get to know the God who desires to give you his all. Listen to this beautiful counsel, friends. Two more quotes or three more quotes before I leave you. I know you have enough of me. Signs of the Times, April 11, 1892, paragraph 3, it says here, If we have a correct knowledge of the character of God, Satan will not be able to overwhelm our souls with doubt and discouragement. Did you hear that? If we have a correct knowledge of the character of God, Satan will not be able to overwhelm your soul with doubt and discouragement. That's why in John 17 verse 3, it says, And this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Eternal life, friends, starts by knowing him, by knowing Jesus. And lastly, I'd just like to leave to you this beautiful verse here from John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you. Jesus himself said this. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Can you say amen to that, friends? That even what your situation right now, this pandemic, this craziness that is happening around us, the promise is, in me you might have peace. In the world, this is now my version. In the world, there is unemployment. There is cancellation of weddings. There is cancellation of plans. There is pandemic. In the world, there is a lockdown. In the world, there is MCQ, GCQ, ECQ. In the world, he shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Isn't this amazing, friends? Our God has overcome the world. So do not, do not stay away from Him. And this is one thing I realize. We have been praying, Lord, please. When we do not realize that God is interceding for us, Jem, please, just give in. Jem, please, surrender your heart to me. Jem, please, give everything to me. And this is one thing, friends, that I want you to know, that Jesus is interceding for each one of you, that you may somehow give your will to his will. Somehow you might relinquish your plans to his plans. For I believe, my dear friends, he has better plans for us. He desires to give you perfect peace, peace that passeth understanding. If it is your desire if you want to ask God, Lord, I want you. Not just the blessings, not just the miracle. I want you in my life. If it is your desire, I just want to invite you to kneel down with me. And let's give him our hearts. Let us pray. Our great God, our dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we praise and we thank you for interceding for us. And thank you so much, Lord, that even though we have uttered those selfish prayers before, 
And even now, oh Lord, you still listen to our prayers. You are such an awesome God. You're such a loving God. But Lord, we know that you desire for us to receive even way, way better than what we ask. So Lord, I pray that you please open our understanding. Open our hearts, oh Lord, that we may begin to see your desire for us. That we may submit our will to your will. That our lives will be fully led and guided by you. Dear Father, I pray in a very special way right now for my brothers and sisters who are bowing down before me. I don't know what they're going through, but you know, dear Lord, you see, you see the end from the beginning and you read, you read, oh Lord, the cries of their hearts. So Lord, I ask in a very special way that this heart will be given to you. This heart will be submitted to you, oh Lord. Dear Father, we pray the prayer that Ellen White prayed. Dear Lord, please take our hearts for we cannot give it. It is your property. Please keep it pure for we cannot keep it for thee. Save us, Lord, in spite of ourselves, our weak and Christ-like selves. And please mold us, fashion us, and lift us to the pure and holy atmosphere where the rich current of thy love can flow through our souls. Dear Father, I pray that you please anoint each and every brother and sister of mine with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Thank you so much, Lord for hearing and answering our prayers. And thank you so much, Lord, that what you're about to do to us and through us and in us is exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. For we pray all this in the loving name of your son, Jesus, all your children say, amen.